at this point, we can download, install, and configure the Azure AD Connect software. What Azure AD Connect is going to do is synchronize our on-prem Active Directory users to Office 365. This allows the users to log into Office 365 using either their email address or their UPN name, whatever we're syncing over into Office 365. If you remember earlier, we changed the UPN suffixes. So what we're going to do is have our users sync over into Office 365 using their alias at shellpublishing.com login information. They'll use their on-prem passwords because those will be synced over as well. In this demonstration, I'm going to install Azure AD Connect on the domain controller, DC01. My personal preference is that we install this on a separate server completely because I'm old school. I prefer a domain controller to remain a domain controller, but I understand that, especially in some smaller environments, organizations don't want to invest in another physical box or even another VM for that matter because it does use resources, requires licensing, etc. So we're going to deploy Azure AD Connect on our domain controller. So to do this, what I'm going to do is scroll down in my admin center here, and I'm going to select Azure Active Directory. Now on the dashboard here, we'll see a little box for Azure AD Connect telling us that sync is not enabled. Well, we're going to change that right now. When we click on that, we're offered the option to download Azure AD Connect, which is what we're going to do here. So we'll go ahead and download it. And we'll open our download folder and launch it. This installation process only takes a few minutes. It's not terribly complex. And we'll go ahead and tell it to make changes. So when the Azure AD Connect wizard begins, you're prompted to agree to the licensing terms. So we'll go ahead and do that and click continue. On the express settings screen, you have two options. You can customize your installation or you can use express settings. Virtually all documentation you read online Oddly enough, just says, go ahead and use Express Settings, no problem. However, if you look at the fine print here on the Express Settings page, you'll see that it's telling me that shellpublishing.local is not a routable domain and that it's recommended to use custom settings. Most domains that I encounter still today are using .local domain names. And that's why I built this lab with a .local domain name, so you can see this. So what we're going to do here is click Customize. Now for the required components, we can leave this page at its default. We don't need to configure any optional settings here. So we can click Install, and it's going to go out and install any kind of prerequisites that Azure AD Connect requires. After it completes the prerequisite installations, you're prompted to configure the user sign-in option. And you'll see here you have a couple different options, password, hash, pass-through, federation, the option to not configure at all, enabling single sign-on, etc. For this lab, we're going to use password hash synchronization. Essentially what this does is allow the users to sign into Office 365 using the same passwords that they use on-prem. So we'll go ahead and click Next. And then what we have to do is connect to our Azure AD with our global admin account. So we'll go ahead and provide that information here. And we can go ahead and click Next.
And at this point, it tells me that there are currently no directories configured, but it finds the shell publishing.local, so we're going to add this directory. Now, when I do that, it's going to ask for an AD account that has sufficient permissions to perform the periodic synchronization. Now, we'll have two options here. We can either let Azure AD Connect create the account that it needs, or we can use an existing account that we'd already set up. Generally speaking, I just let Azure AD Connect create the account. Now, to do that, I have to provide my enterprise admin credentials. So let me go ahead and provide that information here. And we'll OK it. We get a green checkbox to tell us that it's configured. So we can go ahead and click Next. Now, what it's going to do here is pull in the directory schema for our shell publishing.local forest. Now, on the Azure AD sign in configuration screen, at least in the case where we have a forest that has a .local extension, we're going to see this notice that the .local has not been added to Azure AD. And that's fine, it's not going to be, which is why we had to run ID fix and mitigate those issues earlier on. We will see, however, the shellpublishing.com has been verified. Now what we'll also have here is an option to select an on-prem attribute to use as the Azure AD name, which is the name that users are going to log in to Office 365 with. You'll have a couple different options here, user principal name, all these different attributes. Make life easy on yourself and just use the UPN. I mean, that's why we changed it early on, because it has to be a routable domain for 365 to use it. Now, before the next box lights up, we have to check this little notice here that acknowledges that we want to continue without matching all UPN suffixes to verified domains. Now, it's doing this because it found accounts that it can't log in because the UPNs are .locals. Remember, we have our shell admin account. We have some of those other accounts sitting out there that we're not going to pull into Office 365 anyway. So essentially, we're just going to check the box to acknowledge it and then click Next. Now, the domain and OU filtering screen, how you treat this is going to be different based on the environment you're migrating. Some environments have user accounts all over the place in Active Directory. You might have 57 different OUs with user accounts all over the place. They're always fun to deal with. Other domains will have a clean infrastructure where all of their employees are in a single employee's OU, or at least in an OU with a bunch of sub-OUs. If your users are all over the place in the on-prem Active Directory, just go ahead and sync all domains and OUs. If the users are in a controlled set of OUs, go ahead and sync the selected OUs. Now, what I like to do here is I try to bring over into Office 365 only the accounts that I need. I don't need to be bringing in service accounts that aren't mail enabled. I don't need to be bringing over all that other garbage that isn't needed in the 365 environment. So what I tend to do is select the second option here, and then I expand this dropdown. So let's uncheck everything here and only select the OUs we want to sync. So in our environment here, we have a DLs and groups OU that's going to contain our distribution lists and groups in our Active Directory, an employees OU that includes all of the employees of Shell Publishing, an OU that contains shared mailboxes, and an OU that contains conference rooms. So again, this option is going to be different depending on the environment that you're migrating. You may find that it's just easier to sync everything over. I try to avoid that when I can, just because I don't like to bring that mess over. But for our environment here, it's a pretty clean environment. So we're going to sync just these four OUs over. So we can go ahead and click Next. The options in this identification screen can generally be left at their defaults. Essentially, what you're doing here is defining 
how users are identified in the on-prem directory, and if they're represented only once across those directories. Unless you're doing something odd here, these options can be left at their defaults. Now what I do see some admins do is change this option here for how users are identified with Azure AD. Some admins get creative and opt to choose a specific attribute to identify users in AD. Just let Azure do it. Azure does a good enough job on its own managing this stuff. So just leave this stuff at its default unless there's a very specific reason that you need to change it. So we'll go ahead and click next here. Now, this option, this, this filtering option is intended for pilot deployments. Essentially what you could do is you could pilot your sync by adding the users that you want to move over, those, those pilot users. You could add those pilot users to a group and then sync just that group over into Office 365. Now, it's important to note that nested groups aren't supported. But what you could also do here is if you're going to sync all of the users from the on-prem Active Directory instead of filtering on the OUs, you could get granular here. And let's assume all of your users are spread out in 57 different OUs in, in the on-prem Active Directory. You could still opt to sync everyone over using that first option. But then on this page here, what you could do is specify a group, maybe called O365 or O365 resources or O365 users. And then what you could do is add all of your users to that group in the on-prem AD. And then when this process happens, the sync would look at all the OUs, but it would only synchronize people in that group. That's a workaround, and I've seen some environments use it. However, what that also does is add another step to the user provisioning process or the onboarding process. So when Susie starts at shellpublishing.com, the administrator needs to remember to put that user in the O365 users group or she's not going to sync into Office 365. Since we have a clean environment and couple that with the fact that the filtering really isn't meant for that, it's usually meant for piloting, we're just going to let it sync all of our users and then we'll click next. Now in the optional features page, we do need to enable exchange hybrid deployment. If we hover over the little question mark here, it gives us some information about the hybrid deployment option. Essentially, it allows for the coexistence of exchange, yada, yada, yada. What's important to note here that it does allow for certain attributes in Azure AD to be written back into the on-prem Active Directory. So be sure to enable the exchange hybrid deployment. Now, the Exchange Mail Public Folders Preview option is exactly that. It's a preview, and it doesn't mean what you think it means. If we check this box, it's not going to sync our public folders from on-prem to Exchange Online. As a matter of fact, our on-prem environment doesn't even use public folders in this lab, so it would be a moot point anyway. If we hover over the question mark here, we'll see that what this does is synchronizes attributes for mail-enabled public folders from the on-prem directory to Azure. It specifically calls out here in the second paragraph that this feature doesn't create public folder objects in Exchange Online. They actually have to be synchronized using PowerShell, and that's a whole other discussion. So we'll leave that turned off. And one other option I want to look at here is the password write-back. If you're going to use password write back, what that's going to do is allow password changes in Office 365 or really Azure AD to be written back to the on-prem directory, which is typically the opposite direction of how things go. If you want to use password write back, you have to have a premium version of Azure AD enabled. We don't have that here. 
So we're going to leave password right back turned off. And we can see we already have the password hash synchronization turned on, which essentially allows users to log in to their 365 accounts with their on-prem passwords. So we can click next here. And it'll go through the configuration process. And then we can tell it to start the synchronization when the configuration is complete. We're not going to do staging here. Essentially what this does is allow us to configure Azure AD Connect, but not sync anything over. We're going to start the synchronization. So we'll go ahead and click Install. The configuration process takes a few minutes to complete as it goes through its exercises. And when it completes, you'll get a configuration complete screen that gives you an overview of what's happened. Essentially here, it's telling me that the configuration is complete and that I should log into the portal in Office 365 to verify that our user accounts have been synced. It's also telling me that the Active Directory recycle bin isn't enabled in shellpublishing.local. Uh, that's fine. I'm not worried about the recycle bin. And it's also telling me about the source anchor that Office 365 is using. So we can go ahead and click exit here. Now to confirm that my users synced over with the proper logins, let's switch over to the portal and roll up and go to users. And we can see that the conference room has been synced. It's blocked because conference rooms are disabled, which is fine. And then we have our users, Jen Fisher, Mike Davis, Steve Miller and Tom Mitchell all came over with their alias at shellpublishing.com as their login names. Their passwords are going to be the same as their on-prem. We can see that they're unlicensed, which is fine for now. We're not worrying about licensing users at the moment. We can see our shared mailbox also came over in a blocked state. Again, it's disabled. So we can see that our Azure AD Connect has been installed and the initial sync has run and is working. So in the next lesson, we'll go through and create a mailbox to make sure everything's working the way it's supposed to. So I'll see you over there.